Hello and welcome back to Your Hobby Connection. I'm Ben. Today we're looking at the locomotives that I have owned since I can remember. So I have two of the same steam locomotives, as you'll notice. I have two Pennsylvania Flyers. This guy right here, he was bought in 2003, I do believe. Uh, after, I don't know, 2013 or so, I had burned out the tender uh, whistle. So I went ahead and I said, I can't find replacement parts. And I found this little guy right here, brand new in a box. And I said, I'm buying it because it had a good working whistle tender. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about this guy. And remember the one on my left hand side, it is the exact same. So when I describe one, I'll be describing, describing both of them. So we have what's called a 442. You have four pilot slash pony trucks. You have four driver trucks, sorry, driver trucks, four drivers, and then two trailing wheels. So these help guide your little drivers. These guys right here, these help uh, pony trucks drive and guide your locomotive. These guys right here, they're the power and these are the uh, the guides for the rear end of the train. Now, as you'll notice, we have the tender cut bar here. So this is what holds these two pieces together. Uh, inside of this guy, there's a, uh, a whistle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn it on its side, as you'll see. There's our, uh, right there, the, the bar to hold the tender together with the locomotive. Here's your pony trucks. These are the ones that rotate side to side and guide. Now you notice we have one, two pickup rollers that run on our middle rail here. That's one leg of your power. And then this wheel set on the either side will pick up the other side of the power. It just depends on where the power is on your track. Now, if you'll notice, we also have working running gear here, or uh, valve working. It's not as fancy as some of the other locomotives out there, but as a, a basic starter set, the Pennsylvania Flyer comes with a pretty, uh, pretty awesome little locomotive here. It has pretty good pulling power. As you'll notice, it's uh, fairly small. It probably weighs about five or six pounds. It's uh, all metal on the casting here. No plastics. The only plastic parts is on the, uh, the gears here. And that's uh, one of the things we need to do as well is maintenance it, because this poor guy hasn't probably run in about five or six years. Um, if you look up on the top here, it's all cast in parts and materials. Uh, you have a screw here to help take off the cab, I would imagine. I haven't pulled this thing apart before. Uh, it might be a different video for a different day. Inside of here, your, uh, your funnel for your smokestack, there is a little thing where you drop some smoke, smoke fluid in there, because this is a smoking locomotive. So every time this thing puffs forwards and backwards, you'll see a little bit of smoke puffing out of this area here. So that's our steam locomotive right here. As you can see, it's got some pretty good details. Now we go to our tender. What makes this a whistle tender, you ask? Well. If you look on the bottom side, we have a pickup roller here and none over here. But this little guy right there gets power and there's a little uh, air blown motor in here. And what that motor does is it spins at a high rate of speed and it makes a whistle sound, which I'll let you guys hear in a minute. It's also got an operating coupler, as you can see right here. Hi, there it is. So it's a spring loaded coupler. So you just pop that little lever down there, it opens up and then you can close it back down. Uh, detail, it has a, a false uh, coal load. Uh, nothing opens up on the top here. If you ever had to tear one of these guys apart, you take these two screws out and you take this screw out in the front here. Once you do that, the whole thing comes up, which brings me back to my first locomotive. As you'll notice, this guy has already been disassembled. I lost the screws. So <laughs> it's one of the other reasons why I had to buy another locomotive because, well, there is uh, something on this board here that ended up burning out. So I need to replace this board. But at the time, I just wasn't technical enough to figure out how to do that. But now that we're here with you guys, we're gonna learn how to do that. And it's the exact same thing. This is just the body of the tender here, of uh, the inside. Again, there's nothing fancy about it. So if you wanna put it back on, you just grab it, do it like that, and then there we go. Grab it from there and move it away. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble our train here. You always wanna put your tender on the track first, because if you don't, it becomes really hard to hook your pin with the locomotive tender. And there you go, you just roll this guy back. The trucks on the front are always fun to try to set on the train because they don't like sitting on there. Okay, so now we have our little transformer right here. And as you see, we've got it in neutral. There's your whistle. And you may or may not be able to see it. But when we do run the train on the main line, we'll, we'll be able to see smoke coming out of the smokestack there. So that is our uh, newest Pennsylvania Flyer locomotive we've got here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this guy right here. This is the exact same as this one. They're both uh, K-Line electric locomotives, they're the diesel engines. So, what do we have with them? Well, not a whole lot. They're, they're pretty standard locomotives. As you will see, the K-Line did a really good job boxing them up. Beautiful box job there. Uh, they are uh, dual operating couplers on either end. So what that means is, unlike our steam locomotives, we can run this guy in either direction and have cars being pulled by it. Or if you want to be crazy, you could run. Come on, box, let me out. There we go. Or if you want to get really crazy with it, you could have this locomotive running in the middle of two sets of cars, like they might do in the real railroad at times. And now we'll just set this big guy on the track. It runs on uh, two traction motors, one in the front, one in the back, and it's on a four truck bogey. So you got two uh, two wheels on the uh, four wheels on the first bogey, four wheels on the back bogey. And again, it is powered. It has. Oh, I've locked this guy in the forward motion. So that's one thing that's cool about this little guy is if you flip him on the side, very gently, obviously, there is a switch right here that locks it in forward motion. When I was running it in tandem with this other guy, I locked him in the same direction. Otherwise, you will be pushing and pulling and you will not get very far if you try to run them tandem in conventional mode. And believe me, it was not pretty when I, until I figured out how to do it cor correctly. So there we go. As you can see, he lights up, goes into neutral again. And that's pretty much it in terms of his movements. It does have a fine whistle detail there at the horns. You've got the two smokestacks. This is a non-smoking version. K-Line and other railroad company brands did make diesels later on that had smoke units in them. And again, we have two operating couplers, as you'll see. The front one is on the same bogies right there. So you can pop it open. Sometimes it likes to be springy and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on its mood today. Come on. Okay, well, this one might need some work because I think the spring is not quite springing like it's supposed to. So this one has a fun couple of problem. I'll deal with that later. Again, I haven't pulled these guys out in forever, so. And it could just be me being, I won't say inadequate, but having, there it goes. Just having a rough day with it. It could be that the springs are worn out too for all I know. I haven't, I haven't used this thing in so doggone long. Anything is possible, but Again, as you can see, we do have the traction motors on this side. There's gearing here, gearing here. So it is a dual motor, dual geared engine. So we have twice the tractive effort and pulling power as our steam locomotives. So you've only got a pair of drivers and you've got two drivers on this guy here. Not drivers per se, but two sets of motors pulling this train along. And uh, as you'll notice, we also have one tender Two tenders. I acquired these from somebody a long, long time ago. I can't remember where or when I got them. As you can see, we've got the Rock Island guy right here. It, uh, it's supposed to be a sound locomotive, or sorry, sound tender, but it's missing its uh, pickup roller, and it never came with the locomotive. And uh, this guy, it has its pickup roller. It is supposed to make sound, but again, I don't have a controller for it or a locomotive. Um, I acquired these just because I wanted to pull something different with my steam locomotive. 
Because I thought, hey, you know what? It'd be kind of fun to have a Chesapeake and Ohio locomotive or, you know, train set or a Rock Island Road train. So that kind of concludes my, uh, my motive power that I recently have. So in the future, we'll get to play with this guy, but I figured one good enough for everything today. And from there, we'll see these guys on the road. So uh, if you liked the video, like, subscribe, comment, share it with your friends and family, and come back for more. Thank you and have a great day on the rails.